Okay, so here's a question where we're asked to journalize the following transactions. Now, what's important here, and I want to point out, they're giving you what's called a chart of accounts. These are the accounts that the company uses in their business to um, capture all the things, all the transactions that are happening that are affecting them monetarily, specifically that are affecting their assets, liabilities, and equity accounts. So when we are doing our journal entries, we have to use those account titles. We can't make up our own. So I'm going to do um, these with you just to get you started. And then we'll have some more practice after this. So purchased office furniture for $5,000, paying $2,500 in cash. The balance must be paid within 60 days. So every time we're doing a transaction, we know that at least two accounts are going to be impacted. There will be at least one debit and one credit. Our accounting uh, cycle needs to stay in balance. Please forgive me, I shouldn't have said accounting cycle, I'm in the accounting equation. So we know our assets have to equal our liabilities plus our equity. So um, when we do our transaction analysis, there's a few things that we should keep in mind. The first thing is what accounts are involved. So we know we need at least two, we can have more than two. What type of account is it? Is it an asset liability or equity account? Is that asset liability or equity increasing or decreasing? And therefore, do I debit or credit that account and then record the journal entry and post it? So when we purchase office furniture, let's stop right there. Purchased office furniture. I know the company is going to be receiving office furniture. So let's figure out what type of account that is. Office furniture is an asset. It has future value. So that, knowing that my office furniture account needs to increase and it's an asset, that tells me I need to debit that account. So I'm going to de debit office furniture. Oh, it's just furniture. See, again, you have to follow the chart of accounts up there. Okay. So furniture, and that's going to be $5,000. So I'm going to bring $5,000 worth of furniture into the business. Asset increases with debits, as do your dividends and your expenses. Those are the only three accounts that increase with debits. Assets, dividends, expenses. That's an, consider it aid, A-D-E, like lemonade. Those are the three things. Everything else will increase with a credit. So I paid... $2,500 in cash. So again, what type of account is cash? Well, cash is an asset. This time it's decreasing because I'm paying it out. So to decrease an asset, I will credit it. So I'm going to type in cash here. Great. Okay. So furniture is debited, 5,000 cash is credited, 25,000. Here's the problem, debits always have to equal credits. And in this case, they do not. I'm still off by $2,500. So now my credits will equal my debit. The question is what account needs to be credited here? And it says the balance must be paid within 60 days. So they bought the furniture, they put some money down, the rest they're gonna pay. And we call that an accounts payable. If it had interest and due dates and all that good stuff you see up here, that would be notes payable. But it, we're going to assume it's just accounts payable. We're going to pay it off rather quickly. Let's do some more. In this case, we provided $19,000 in services. All services were on account. $19,000 in services we provided. Okay, well, that would tell me that this company is a service business. That's how they make their money. And if that's how they make their money, that's what we call revenue. So revenue is a type of equity account. And you can see here we have an account called service revenue. So I'm going to credit my service revenue because I know that revenue increases with a credit. So by crediting that service revenue account, I am increasing. And you can see it's indented just a little, just like the credit column. 
So it's increasing my equity, specifically my revenue account. And, and it says all services were on account. So we didn't get cash for that. We're gonna send them a bill. And what do we call that? We call that accounts receivable. So we provided services to our customers and then we send them a bill. So that's an asset accounts receivable. So my asset accounts receivable is increasing. So I'm gonna debit that account and I credit service revenue, which is um, the equity account that is also increasing. So the accounting equation will still stay in balance. Let's do some more. Paid the administrative assistant $2,500 for salary. So anytime we pay money, uh, if you think about what type of account would be involved, that's gonna be cash and it's gonna go down. So our cash is decreasing, it's an asset. So I'm gonna credit $2,500 to my cash account. And I paid the administrative assistant. Hmm, well which of these accounts will fit that bill? And it looks like salaries expense. So I incurred salaries expense when I pay my employee for her work. And again, you can see here the credits are always indented a little bit to match the credit column. So you can easily see without even looking at the debit and credit columns. Excuse me. Sorry for the interruption. Um, let's keep going. So received $13,000 from customers for services rendered in the prior month. So again, let's think about what accounts are involved. Well, we know we received $13,000. So that will tell you that we received cash. So what type of account is cash? It's an asset and our assets are gonna go up because we received that money. So I can go ahead and debit cash for $13,000. And then from customers for services rendered. Okay, so I got paid from customers for services I provided in the prior month, which tells me that I would have sent them a bill. So I'm gonna go ahead and credit $13,000 to my accounts receivable. If it would have been in the same month and we received cash, I would have just credited my revenue. But my assumption is that it will be the offset of what we have here in B. We provided the service they were on account. So we debited the accounts receivable. When we get paid, we credit the accounts receivable. That gets rid of the customer's account. And you may have heard that before if you go into some place and maybe you return something and say, we're gonna credit your account. That's where it comes from. We're gonna reduce that liability that you have to us or, or reduce what you show owing us. Okay, so paid 5,400 to the landlord for the upcoming three months. So if we pay 5,400, what type of account is that? That's gonna be cash. Cash is gonna go down. Cash is an asset, and if it's decreasing, that means I need to credit my cash for $5,400. And then we have to figure out the debit then to the landlord for the upcoming three months. Okay, let's see what options we have up here that deal with rent. Um, we have a rent expense, and we have prepaid rent. So in this case, since it's gonna give us the benefit for three months, it's gonna be prepaid rent. If it was something that had already occurred, like the salaries up there when we're paying our employees for salaries already, or hours already worked, we debit the uh, salaries expense. So the prepaid, I should have typed rent, sorry. Prepaid rent will be the debit for $5,400. And that should do it.